Welcome to this Reporters Special. I'm Frances Harrison. Although Iran and Israel are bitter enemies, few know that Iran is home to the largest number of Jews anywhere in the Middle East outside Israel. About 25,000 Jews remain in this country, determined to stay put despite the difficulties they face. It's dawn and the ancient Torah is being brought out in the Mullah Aghababa synagogue. The prayers are in Hebrew, but the last place you'd expect this to be happening is one of the most conservative cities in Iran, a revolutionary Islamic state bitterly opposed to Israel. Jews have lived in Persia for nearly 3,000 years, but it's only in the last 50 that their numbers have dwindled. In the city of Yazd, it's now increasingly difficult to gather the 10 Jewish adult males needed to hold prayers. When recruitment agents came from Israel 50 years ago and started to encourage people to emigrate to Israel, things were so bad here that Jews said, it can't be any worse over there. People didn't even have a piece of bread to eat at night. They couldn't afford a pair of shoes. So a small group went, the young first, and then they took their parents. This neighborhood was densely populated. In every house, there were families of 10 to 15 people, and all these Jewish areas had their own synagogues. Everybody's gone. Most of the people are now in Israel. Not long ago, many Muslims believed Jews and Christians were ritually unclean. When Mr. Goharian was a child, he had to get out of the way of Muslims in the streets if it was raining, lest the water he touched contaminated them. <laughs> Jews were also not allowed to use this underground water reservoir, essential for life in the desert. <laughs> Descendants of the slaves of Babylon freed by Cyrus the Great Jews have lived in Yazd for centuries, but now this is probably the last generation. Once they had 13 synagogues operating here, now they're down to two. Before the creation of Israel, there were thousands of Jews living in the central Iranian city of Yazd. Today, there are just 10 families remaining here, six of them related by marriage. And among the most famous Jew from Yazd is now the Israeli president, Moshe Katsav. His name in Persian, Rasab, means a butcher. My father, my grandfather, my great-grandfather, and my great-great-grandfather were butchers, everyone except me. There were several generations who were butchers, but we were in the sales business. Many generations were in the meat trade. No, no, your father wasn't a butcher. Your grandfather was a butcher. Your father knew how to do it, but he wasn't actually a butcher. The Israeli president left Iran when he was only five years old but his mother and uncles have fond memories of living in Yazd. They haven't been back for 50 years, but when they see our pictures of Yazd, they can still recognize the streets. Wasn't this the house of Honchak on the corner? It was there. I think my mother and father's house was here on the corner. It was here. This was the house of Agnes Kha. Is this our house? Is this our house? All my family, thank goodness, came to Israel and they're all all right. We don't have family left there, but I'm very interested in what's happening in Iran. Naturally, I follow what's going on and I'm being kept informed.
למדווח. משה קצב may have to read Iran's most famous poet, Fyodosi, in a Hebrew translation, but he still speaks Persian to his mother when they're alone, and his wife cooks Iranian food. More than being homesick, I'm really curious to see Iran, to see my childhood home, the place where I was born. I hope that it'll be possible for me to visit Iran one day, officially. I went to Iran on the eve of the Islamic Revolution as a member of the Israeli parliament, at the request of the then Prime Minister, Menachem Begin, to convince Jews there to leave. I was enthralled by the landscape, which I couldn't remember from my childhood, and by Iranian culture and history, which is very rich. But the long Jewish history in Yazd is now no longer visible. Muslims have taken over the shops and homes of Jews who emigrated after the Second World War and then again after the Islamic Revolution. This is now one of the gold bazaars in Yazd, but once upon a time, 80% of the shops here were fabric sellers run by Jews. This is one of the last ones left. This shopkeeper may be Jewish, but his customers are Muslim and he wouldn't survive without them. Only two of his sisters remain in Yazd. The rest of his family is in Tehran or abroad. There were so many Jews in the area in those days that we wouldn't go home for the noon prayers. We'd just pray here. But now we are lonely. I have neighbors in the bazaar who are Jewish. We've worked here together for more than 20 years, and we try to get on well. We end up spending more time with each other than with our families. But for Mr. Goharian, it is a family business. He's in the rag trade and doing well with the help of his son. Like the other 25,000 Jews remaining in Iran, he sees no reason to abandon his business and face an uncertain future in Israel. He proudly displays the signs of his religion, advertising the fact that he's Jewish. <laughs> Though the Goharian family says their life is not too bad, their main problem is overwhelming loneliness. Mrs. Goharian's whole family is in Tel Aviv, and she hasn't seen her mother for years and is suffering from depression. There's no one left to socialize with, and at school, some Muslims won't sit next to their children because they're Jewish. Because our numbers are so few, there's been no Jewish wedding party in Yazd for the last six years. We're not more than 60, 70 people here. If we want to throw a birthday party, it won't be jolly. There aren't more than eight or nine or ten little children here. If we want to celebrate something, it simply isn't fun because we're so few people. Do you think one day it's possible there will simply be no Jews left in Iran at all? Even just thinking that one day there may be no Jews here, I get very upset. For me, the idea of leaving Yazd is disturbing, because I love its alleys, streets and synagogues. I hate the idea that there might be no Jews here. We won't leave unless we have to. Perhaps one day there will be no Jews in Yazd, but there will always be Jews in Iran. When the boys grow up, they'll have to leave Yazd to find wives, and the long history of this community will be obliterated. These are the Damavan Mountains, just north of Tehran, where the first Jews came to settle in Iran nearly 3,000 years ago. Today, there's not much sign of them here, except this, the oldest Jewish cemetery in the country. It's sadly neglected, strewn with broken glass and rubbish, and many of the headstones are smashed. It seems as if those who lie at rest here no longer have anyone in the country to visit their graves. The most important thing about this cemetery is that we believe the soil here is very similar to the soil in Jerusalem. It is the desire of every Jew in the Middle East to be buried in Jerusalem. But if that's not possible, then to be buried here in this graveyard. It's a very ancient place with a long history. 
the nearby town is encroaching on the cemetery. For years, the Jewish community has tried to get permission to build a wall around the site to protect it. They say one local official who has a problem with Jews is preventing them. This may be an ancient heritage site, but in another hundred years, there may be no trace of it at all. We'll take a break now, but I'll be back with more on the tiny Jewish minority that lives in the heart of the Islamic Republic. Welcome back to this reporter's special from Iran on the Jews who first came to this country 3,000 years ago. Several hundred miles to the west in the city of Hamadan, one of Judaism's most important sites is still preserved, the tomb of Esther and Mordecai. Iran is home to more Jewish shrines and places of pilgrimage than any other country except Israel. Though, of course, after the Iranian Revolution, Israeli Jews cannot come here. But every year, when Jews around the world celebrate Purim, they remember how Esther, an Archimenid Persian queen, saved her fellow Jews from annihilation. But death to Israel is today's slogan in the Islamic Republic. And President Ahmadinejad has repeatedly said Israel should be wiped off the map. Hardliners have been signing up volunteers for what they call martyrdom missions against Israel. But do they have a problem with Judaism or with Israel's treatment of the Palestinians? If we say we want to go on a mission, we mean we want to confront those who oppress others. But not all Jews are oppressors, are they? We want to attack those people who have created the state of Israel and made Palestinian women and children homeless. <laughs> Most of these young men and women are unlikely ever to blow themselves up. This is just their way of proving their religious devotion and winning respect in a society that heavily glorifies martyrdom. As Muslims, they recognize Judaism and Christianity as religions of the book, sharing many prophets in common. We believe that Jews are very religious people. Theirs is a very divine religion. We are not their enemies. We believe that Moses is one of the great prophets of God. But President Ahmadinejad's questioning of the Holocaust caused uproar abroad and among Iranian Jews, most of whom were too scared to talk about what he said. It's very regrettable to see a horrible tragedy so far-reaching as the Holocaust being denied. I've expressed my view about this. It was a very big insult to Jews around the world. And sometimes extremists do incite hatred. During the recent fighting in Lebanon, this hardline paper ran pictures of Jews celebrating Israeli independence in synagogues. The paper lied, saying the synagogues were inside Iran. This provoked a number of opportunists in the city of Shiraz. There was an assault on two synagogues there, which fortunately was dealt with by the intervention of the security forces, who explained to the people that this news was not true. Today, the biggest number of Jews live in the Iranian capital, Tehran. Some 14,000 quietly practicing their religion, trying to keep out of politics. Some here say Iran's Islamic revolution has actually been good for the community. It's made the synagogue the main focus of Jewish social life and forced even the minorities to become more religious. But still, most Muslims in Iran know very little about the Jews who live amongst them. And that ignorance can make it easy to manipulate public opinion. There's a lot of propaganda across the country. 
Iranian television news and films mix the concept of Judaism and Zionism. Ordinary people are made to believe that all Jews are responsible for the policies of Israel. These films on Iranian television are negative influences on society. Most Iranian Jews say anti-Semitism is a mainly European phenomena. They argue Oriental Jews have deeper roots in Persian society and therefore there's a tradition of tolerance. In Iran, we haven't had any organized anti-Semitic movements like in Europe. There hasn't been any racially motivated hatred. Of course, the Jewish history in Iran has had its ups and downs. But ordinary people's behavior on the whole has been peaceful. And we haven't had any events on the scale of what happened to Jews in Europe. This is one of four special Jewish schools in Tehran, but only the religion teacher is a Jew. All the principals are Muslim, and the schools have to open on Saturday, which is the Jewish Sabbath. Nagme has now moved to a Muslim high school after nine years in a Jewish one. She says she's had no trouble making new friends. Elias says he has Muslim neighbors and they play together and help each other with their homework. But he's not allowed to eat in Muslim houses because their food is not kosher. Jews are not eligible for jobs in the army. And under Iranian law, if one person in a Jewish family converts to Islam, he inherits all the property. Gone are the days when Jews couldn't get passports to travel abroad, but still there is prejudice. But if you want to know what's really bothering Jewish people here, the best place to go is one of the kosher butcher shops. There are only six left in Tehran. Just as much as the rabbi, the butcher listens to everyone's problems and offers free advice. <laughs> We are comfortable in Iran. If you don't meddle in politics here, no one will bother you. I just sell meat. One of the regular customers, Giti, has two sons in Israel. She spoke to them three times by telephone the night before. Giti says she's been to Israel twice, once via Cyprus, once via Turkey both times has had no problems whatsoever returning to Iran. The same for the butcher. Three or four years ago, I went to Israel. When I came back, I was afraid that the immigration officer would make trouble for me when I told him where I'd been. You know, people come to my shop and tell me all sorts of stories, but actually, I was all right. The Islamic Republic of Iran does not recognize the state of Israel or allow its citizens to travel there. But in practice, Iran turns a blind eye when Jews travel to Israel through a third country. Israelis don't stamp their passports. And controversially, this modern hospital in Tehran receives funds from the Jewish diaspora. This in a country where being on the payroll of foreigners is tantamount to treason. It's one of only four Jewish charity hospitals worldwide. And bizarrely, it recently received a financial donation from the office of President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. The hospital director is Jewish and gave up a lucrative job in a government hospital to serve here. He could easily go abroad but he's determined to stay put. We are Iranian. We are living in Iran for more than 3,000 years. I can speak in English, but I only can think in Persian. Iran is my native country. Persian is my native language. I'm not going to live. I would stay in Iran in any condition. What about your future? Do you think you will remain in Iran? Uh, our condition is not so bad that we must immigrate from Iran. I do not want to be a refuge in the best part of the world. I want to be an Iranian, lives in my country, even in very bad condition. Traditionally, Jews in Iran have practiced medicine over the centuries. It's become a positive point of interaction with the Muslim community. 
Doctors here don't ask the religion of their patients, but these days just a handful are Jewish. They help poor Muslim families get medical treatment, the staff working for a fraction of the pay they receive elsewhere. Muslims, Christians and Jews share the loneliness of old age in this old people's home run by the Jewish community in Iran. Since the Islamic Revolution, huge numbers of young, educated Iranians have gone to the West. It's a familiar refrain, irrespective of the religion. The old prefer to stay in Iran, closer to their memories of the past. A past where Jewish music groups used to play at every wedding. Now this is the last one left in Tehran. But over history, it was Jewish musicians who kept alive the traditions of music at a time when Islam wouldn't tolerate it. Those Jews who remain in Iran are the ones determined to stay, no matter the pressures, just as proud of their Iranian culture as of their Jewish identity. And that's all from this reporter's special from Iran. Until the same time next week, from me, Francis Harrison, goodbye for now.